Hi everyone, uh, in this lecture we will discuss screen film radiography. We can classify the image receptor in projection radiography into three. First, we have screen film. Second, phosphorescent screen used in computed radiography. And last, the direct digital radiography. In screen film radiography, the receptor consists of the film in contact with one or two intensifying screens. Intensifying screens are used because the film is more sensitive to light than the X-ray radiation, thus giving a lower patient dose. However, screens introduce blurring to the image. In this lecture, we will talk about the factors, components, and processes important in the screen film radiography. Let's start. And this is the outline of this video lecture. There are several factors affecting the contrast during X-ray uh, image formation. This involves the transition of one type of contrast to another at two stages in the image formation process. First, the penetration of photons. It involves the physical density or chemical composition of the object as well as the characteristic of the photon itself. Next factor is scatter. A large fraction of the photons interacts through Compton scattering that produces scattered radiation. This scattered radiation can reduce image contrast. We can control the scattered radiation by adjusting the field size or through anti-scattering grid. Last, which is the focus of this lecture, is the film for screen film radiographic system, or generally the radiographic receptor. The characteristic curve of the film affected by its design and processing and the amount of exposure generally controls the contrast due to the film. Uh, next, uh, we have, of course, the design and the processing uh, under the characteristic curve. Screen film radiography uh, is used mostly of the 20th century with the technological development of digital modalities that includes the computed tomography and magnetic resonance imaging. The picture archiving and communication systems, PACS, evolved together with computed radiography and digital radiography. This type of radiography together with digital radiography is being utilized in the country for clinics and hospitals. In conventional radiography or screen film radiography, the receptor consists of the film uh, with the light sensitive emulsion shown here in orange placed in contact with either one or two intensifying screens, which are just fluorescent materials. The X-ray uh, absorption of the screen is important in this system. So when we increase the thickness of our intensifying screen, it, it increases its absorption capabilities as well. However, that may decrease the image quality because photons diffuses in greater distance. Let's focus now on the screens. Several compounds can be used in making intensifying screens. It should have high X-ray absorption and fluorescence. I gave uh, two common compounds here, specifically gadolinium oxysulfide and lantanum uh, oxybromide. So it requires high Z to have a high absorption given that uh, this is mostly photoelectric effect for radiography. The thickness of the screen affects the image blur. Thick screens, shown here, so this is our thick screen, absorb a large fraction of photons but produce large spread of photons that degrades the spatial uh, resolution, shown in this length A here. This uh, fast screen has a high sensitivity or speed but do not produce a high visibility of detail due to the blur. On contrary, a thin screen shown here has a low sensitivity or speed but produce a, a high visibility of detail due to its lower blur or lower spread shown here. 
Okay, so now let's check this graph. This is the general relationship between image blur and sensitivity or uh, the speed. Uh, so we have the sensitivity here uh, measured in the exposure, units of exposure. This is the speed. Uh, we have this uh, classification or five generic types of screens that includes the mammographic, uh, the detail, somewhere here we have the power speed, medium speed, and high speed. Screen uh, with large visibility of detail, which means that we have a low blur, have the lowest absorption efficiency or sensitivity shown here, and uh, required higher exposure. So we have your 0.16, 1.26, and 10. So it requires higher exposure to have a lower blur. On contrary, screens that has the highest speed cannot produce a detailed image due to high amount of blur. Now let us focus on the film. The film is composed of 18 plastic base coated on one on both sides. Previously, I have shown a film coated on both sides, sandwiched to screens or intensifying screens. A film consists of emulsion made out of silver halide that includes silver bromide and silver iodide crystals held in water-soluble gelatin. After the interaction of x-rays to the screen or the phosphor material, it will produce visible light that reduces the silver ions. The silver halide crystals are manufactured in a tabular T-grain shape. So we have this uh, T-grain uh, to have a high surface area. Uh, it improves the interaction of photons uh, with the greens. In the film development, uh, we will use uh, a reducing agent, developer, and an oxidizing solution, which is a fixer. This is how you form the image in your radiographic film. So first, exposure. We need to expose the screen after it passes through the patient. Then it will be converted to, uh, to light that will interact with the film. This film carries a latent image, but we need to process it first uh, before we see the visible image. Now let us talk about the formation of the latent image. The figure on the right is from uh, sprawls.org that shows the sequence of events that convert a transparent film green into black metallic silver. Film density is produced by converting silver ions into metallic silver uh, wherein green becomes black. The film greens have positive silver ions and negative bromide ions. Light will remove the electron to the bromide ions an electron moves to the sensitivity specs, which are just crystalline defect or electron traps. This spec uh, attracts positive silver ions and it will be neutralized, thus converting it into black metallic silver. Okay, after exposing the screen film system, we now go to the development process. Radiographic film is commonly developed in an automatic processor. We have mainly four components in film processing, a total of about 90 seconds actually. So the developer, fixer, wash, and dryer. First, the developer. The developer solution supplies electrons that go into the sensitized grains and convert the remaining silver ions into black metallic silver. The reducer here converts the exposed grains into visible metallic silver. And we have uh, two chemicals here. First is the phenidone uh, that produces the lower to mid gray scale, while hydroquinone produces the dark scale areas. Second, the fixing or fixer. The fixer neutralizes the development process to prevent overdevelopment and fogging. It also clears the underdeveloped greens. Third, the film will go through the water bath to wash the fixer solution. Then last, drying using a hot air. Now, in terms of the spectral sensitivity of the film, uh, films are not equally sensitive 
in terms of the wavelength of light. This must be considered based on the intensifying screens, CRTs, or lasers that will be used. Blue sensitivity is for a basic silver bromide that has its maximum sensitivity in UV and blue regions. Screens made out of calcium tungstate emits blue light. Uh, next is green sensitivity and some intensifier tubes and CRTs emit green light. Last, red sensitivity can be used in many laser beam systems. This spectral sensitivity is important in choosing the safe lighting uh, used in dark rooms so that it will not fog the film. Let us now define optical density of films. We consider this situation. Uh, we have this film, then we have this intensity of light, I naught, which is the intensity from the source uh, without the film. And then we have I sub t, which is the intensity of light that passes through the film, I sub t. We define now the optical density of film, uh, which is OD. Uh, this is defined as the logarithm base 10 of I naught over I sub t. Optical density is also the negative of the logarithm base then of the transmittance t of the film. The transmittance t is just the fraction of the visible light passing through the film from the light source. Now, OD, if your OD is equal to 1, it transmits 10%. And if your OD is equal to 2, it transmits 1% of the initial intensity. Since the human eye works approximately logarithmically uh, to light intensity, a film OD of 1 appears to be 2 times brighter than an OD of 2. The response of the film emulsion to light results in a nonlinear characteristic curve for screen film systems. This is the Herter uh, and Refield or H and D curve shown here at the right. It is a plot of the log of the relative zen exposure on x axis and the optical density of the process film on the y-axis. The slope of the curve represents the contrast uh, characteristic. And we have mainly three parts. So we have the toe, which is mainly a uh, base plus the fog density. Then we have the shoulder and somewhere in between these two. Contrast here is the density difference produced by a specific exposure difference. At the toe region, in this part of, of this curve, uh, we have a little or no con uh, contrast is transferred to the image. At the shoulder region, somewhere at the top of the Herter and Rayfield uh, curve, the film is quite dark and we have a little contrast. Last is uh, the most important region, in imaging is in between of the toe and shoulder. There is a high level of contrast here and we want to expose the film within this range to have the maximum contrast. Last is the film latitude. Film latitude is the exposure range shown here in the drawing. So this is the film latitude here in which a film can produce useful contrast comes to film, we can define a slope based on this graph at the right. The film's gamma value is the maximum slope of the H and D curve shown here. This is the slope in terms of the density difference with an exposure ratio of 10 is to 1. Uh, this can be expressed in terms of the maximum contrast factor by multiplying this one to 3.32, while the average gradient is the average slope between two density values shown here. For medical imaging film, density values are 0.25 and 2 above the base fog density. And this can be defined in terms of the average contrast factor. Now we have the following used to quantify the image quality of a screen film combination. First is spatial resolution, which refers to the ability of the screen film imaging system to differentiate between two nearby objects. This is done by recording and displaying patterns showing in cycles per millimeter. Second, we have the modulation transfer function, MTF, 
which is the spatial frequency response of the imaging system. This is the quantity of contrast at a given spatial frequency relative to the low frequencies. Third, we have the noise spectrum or noise power spectrum is a general method uh, to measure noise amplitude and the image quality acquired from uniform radiation field. Last is the quantum detection efficiency or sometimes we have detective quantum efficiency or DQE. Uh, this is the quantity related to the image quality and refers to the efficiency of the detector in converting incident x-rays into an image signal. Now in summary, there are several factors affecting the contrast during X-ray image formation. We have discussed concepts and structure of a screen film radiography system. When it comes to image formation in the film, we have exposure, processing, then you will have the visible image. We said that films are not equally sensitive in terms of the wavelength of light. And we also have the response of the film emulsion, which is just a nonlinear characteristic curve. Last, uh, we have introduced some image quality quantities used to describe a screen film combination. That's it. Thank you. Hi! If you have learned something in this video and you like my content, please consider subscribing my YouTube channel, JT Academia. See you in the next video.